Hey everyone, and welcome back to my completionist playthrough of the Baldur's Gate saga with SCS. And here we are, about to see the culmination of our efforts to regain our soul, and have the final confrontation with John Irenicus, the final battle in Shadows of Amn. And we're going to engage in all that in just a moment. Uh, before the episode, I've reworked our spells a little bit. Uh, actually, not that many changes were necessary, because I think in order to make this uh, encounter more interesting, we're going to avoid using the most powerful spells and the highest levels of spells in general. Uh, but more on that later. First we have this level up to do on Anamen. And it's not going to be a very impressive one. It doesn't really matter which one of these last three high-level abilities we pick for him. Elemental summoning is going to be something that Jahira is going to engage more in. And we could have an AoE heal in the form of mass raise dead or just energy blades. In some situations this actually might prove slightly useful for whenever Anamen uh, is going to have a need for a plus five enchanted weapon. But anyway, uh, none of that really matters. Uh, I also wanted to showcase some gear changes on camera. Uh, we're going to equip Anaman with the Defender of East Haven to give him some resistances to physical damage, because in this fight armor class is not going to matter all that much, but uh, resistances and ways to avoid damage completely are going to be very important. Uh, also we're going to give him some fire resistance um, in these initial stages of the fight, and we're going to do the same thing on Jahira. Uh, so that basically they, have, they can have some fire resistance uh, independent of uh, their spell buffs. Because of course uh, Jahira and Anaman are our two most vulnerable to dispel uh, party members. Uh, so we can't really rely on their spell buffs too much. But uh, in turn they can have uh, some gear equipped on them that is going to provide them with uh, what they need. Alright, and uh, now I think we can just rest recharge our spells and uh, start our preparations. Yes. And first before we do anything else we're going to set up contingencies on all of our mages and we're not going to put too much faith into those contingencies but it's basically as much as we can do better than nothing <laughs> basically uh, when it comes to a certain part of the upcoming encounter. So we're going to talk uh, at length about what Irenicus can do uh, once we actually you know have him show up. Uh, but generally he is going to be able to dish out some f serious physical damage and he's going to be very inclined to do so in, uh, during his time stops. Uh, and of course in such a situation we can do nothing to react, uh, And uh, but uh, contingencies can still proc during enemies' uh, time stops. So unfortunately we cannot set this any higher. Uh, we have to rely on or hope for this contingency to activate rather quickly whenever our hit points drop to 50% uh, because of course contingencies activate with that delay that's sometimes longer, sometimes a little shorter. So like I said we're not going to put too much faith into it uh, but you know it's, it's better than having nothing. Whenever we're kind of caught in a bad situation during a time stop when Irenicus is just hitting us for you know high damage this might be able to save us. And uh, I'm saying that we're not going to put much faith into it because for example 50% of Edwin's health is just 30 uh, hit points and uh, that's basically uh, for how much Irenicus is uh, hitting with his uh, physical damage and he also has some cold damage on his hits. So in general with every hit Irenicus can deliver around 30 or over 30 damage. And um, What's really dangerous about uh, this whole thing is that um, damage numbers that high can mean that uh, not only can uh, a party member of ours die, but they can also get chunked if they get overkilled by uh, enough damage. So if they get chunked, they of course permanently die, and we're not going to be able to resurrect them. And of course we want to avoid that kind of thing uh, as much as possible. Anyway, now we're going to wait for that little animation after setting up our contingencies. That would interrupt our spell casting. And next we're going to set up our spell sequencers and spell triggers. So on Sanashiro we're once again going to go for one secret word and two lower resistances to dispel and lower the magic resistance of Irenicus once the fight gets underway. On MON we're going to have kind of an anti-magic dispelling sequencer just in case. Uh, we'll see what uh, kind of tricks Irenicus is going to have up his sleeve, but we're going to have two secret words and a spell thrust in this one. And Edwin is going to uh, prepare a damage-oriented spell sequencer with triple flame arrow, using that uh, that conjuration theme, I guess, to his to his advantage, uh, being able to unleash some conjure and unleash some uh, flame arrows. 
Anyway, now we're going to uh, use some stuff that we have prepared. We're going to boost Senashira's constitution to 18, so that uh, her health from 114 can jump up quite significantly, and now it's 150, so that's a very nice boost, and she's also going to drink this potion of invulnerability to give her some armor class and some sa saving throws. Like I said, armor class is not going to be that useful in the upcoming encounter, but, you know, we're going to take what we can get. Um, anyway, now we're going to summon Edwin's uh, projected image, and we're going to dispense some buffs, and I think we're going to do it on Kirinai and on Imoen, and then with the real Edwin we're going to pre-buff him and Sinashira. So we're going to give protection from fire onto our party members, and protection from magic energy, which is actually very important in the upcoming fight. And here on these characters, on our mages and on, on Kirinai, we can kind of rely on magical buffs yeah. because uh, they will be able to keep their buffs safe, whereas Anaman and uh, especially Jahira uh, are going to be pretty vulnerable to that. Anyway, now with real Edwin, we can give protection from fire and protection from magic energy to Sinashira and to himself. And uh, we can already start Anaman's buffs as well. Right, we're going to give everyone some stone skins and some iron skins. And also, we have a scroll of stone skin prepared on Kirinai. She's going to have some stone skins as well. And she also has a scroll of uh, spell immunity to abjuration, so that her buffs can be safe as well. Anyway, now we're going to give everybody uh, chaotic commands, and we're going to give Anaman's chaotic commands to everybody, and not so much Jahira's, because of course his caster level, now level 27, is going to of course make it so that uh, his buffs are going to be uh, way more difficult to dispel for the opponents uh, compared to something cast by Jahira. And uh, we're also going to cast some death wards, but with the death wards we're going to be much more careful. I've uh, memorized a little bit more of them, one more, I think. Not to go overboard with that, just so things are interesting. But basically what we're going to um, try to accomplish with the death wards is avoid the Vorpal hits of Balors and a potential Dark Planetar. So with our mages we can kind of uh, make it so that their hits, uh, the hits of these creatures, are not going to be able to connect thanks to their protection from magical weapons. And uh, of course the mages can kind of stay at a distance. Uh, same applies to Kirinai, and she has avoid death. Whenever she needs it in a pinch, she's going to be able to use that, but other than that she's going to kind of stay out of trouble and uh, use her uh, thrown daggers. But uh, of course Sanashira being our main character needs, uh, needs one death ward, and we're also going to have one on Jahira and Anaman, and whenever their death ward, uh, their death wards get dispelled, we are still going to have two more, just in case, they are very quick to cast, we are going to be able to reapply them during combat, uh, if one of them needs it. Alright, now I think uh, comes the time for some mage buffs, so we're going to have a round of spell shields, We're also going to have a round of spell turnings, because there are some single target, single target spells that uh, Irenicus can unleash upon us, for example, uh, Power Word Blind, that we don't want to uh, get affected by, and we're actually going to use Power Word Blind to our advantage in this fight. Anyway, next we need some mirror images. Also, I think we might already apply some armors of faith on our guys and Anaman is going to be able to apply some some of his own stuff yep. we're also going to haste everyone and apply some globes of invulnerability
And we might as well spice it up a little bit with some fire shields, especially on Sinashira. She's going to have both. And, uh, well, might as well apply your fire shield as well, although yours is not going to last for nearly as long there, uh, M1. Right, now we need some spell immunities to abjuration to keep our buffs safe. <coughs> Kirinai is going to apply hers a little bit later. Alright, and we're also... Yeah, first we're going to use, of course, our Tears of Ball to finally close these eyes and receive our rewards. So we are going to be immune to non-magical and plus one weapons. We get that 10% magic resistance. And we get plus two to uh, our saving throws. That's the reward from the Trial of Greed that I kind of forgot to uh, talk about uh, in the previous episode. The Evil Way would give us 15 hit points and the ability to keep a Black Razor. And both of these are, are good bonuses. Then we have the 20% resistance to fire, cold, and electricity. And uh, now we're going to apply some some finishing touches. Like th these buffs, like are, are going to not last for for nearly long enough, but whatever. Cast that. Uh, Imoen is going to enter the fight with True Sight going on. What is it? By the way, look at Senator's portrait there. <laughs> You can't even see see her from all of these these buffs. <laughs> I love that about Baldur's Gate. But anyway, we're going to have that, and you can cast your spell immunity to abjuration, and now we can use the final tier, and we're going to get plus one wisdom and charisma, which of course are pretty much useless for Sinashira. Uh, the evil way would grant us two strength, uh, which uh, which would be you know for a character like her, it would be slightly more. Uh, useful whenever she switches uh, away from Chrome Fair to use her normal Warhammer, for example. She would be able to um, have some benefits coming from that plus two strength. And also I wanted to say that in classic Baldur's Gate 2, whenever going for that evil outcome in the Trial of Wrath, uh, if you took a specific conversation path, you would be able to also get uh, plus one to your primary attribute. So depending on your class, you could actually get plus three strength from that trial, which is pretty pretty sweet for any uh, like physical combatants. Anyway, here we go. There's no turning back now. And we should have <laughs> all been knocked back. Not just the half of us, but... Anyway, here Irenicus makes his entrance. So we are to battle one last time. No more hiding for either of us. I will enjoy destroying you, Senashira. To die in this place is to cease to exist. I have defeated you once already, Irenicus. You have no chance. I have as much chance as you, Senashira. I have fought my own demons in this hell, and I have learned that it is not to be feared. As horrific as this place is, it merely mirrors the soul we now share. Shrink from it, if you will, but I have grown to appreciate what it can offer. Now defend yourself. One of us is not truly dead and may be restored if the other is left here to rot. I will be free with what I have taken. Do what you must, and I will do the same. You will not be so calm when I doom you to non-existence. You cannot stop the righteous arrayed against you, wizard. We shall live once again in the light, and you will not stop us. Power is on our side, sorcerer. You cannot hope to defeat us in this final reckoning. Your end is near at hand. Well, if you must. No more platitudes, Arunicus. You have taken much from all of us. Die your final death! Ah, that's a that's a fierce battle cry. I like that, Jahira. This is the last stand here in hell. We fall or we win. And here basically the opposite. <laughs> a pretty unimpressive one coming from Imoen. But uh, anyway. Now Arenicus is going to summon some friends. And uh, as you might have noticed here, he assumed the form of the Slayer, the Avatar of Baal. Already some remove magics are heading our way. I wanted to wait for some pre-buffs uh, that are going to appear on Irenicus. But anyway, now that we're all here, we can talk more about what Irenicus is going to have to offer for us in this final encounter. So of course he is now the Slayer, but uh, he is still a level 30 mage. <laughs> so 
Uh, that means, of course, that his remove magics are going to likely be very effective against us, and our own are not going to do too much to him. Um, he also has uh, 280 hit points, and he regenerates 6 hit points per second. <laughs> Uh, he also has 50 magic resistance, and uh, his, and saving throws of 2 all across the board. And uh, he also has great physical stats, like he has 24 strength, 25 dexterity and constitution. And with his improved haste that he's going to have in a second, he actually has 6 attacks per round. And improved haste can only be removed by remove magic or dispel magic, which, as we have covered, are not likely to work against him. But we are going to have some other tricks up our sleeve to kind of counter that. And uh, he also has like great taco, great armor class, <clears throat> and uh, of course being a level 30 mage he has all of his spells as well. All of his uh, spell triggers, spell sequencers, and access to, you know, level 9 spells, all of that uh, he is going to be able to offer. And he also has two Glabrezu with him and two Balors, and these Balors are a little bit special because they are going to explode upon death and deliver magical damage to anyone, uh, actually also Irenicus. <laughs> and, um, we are going to have to be really mindful of that when it comes to Jahira, because she has no protection against that, uh, because they deliver magical damage. So um, Anaman, uh, although he doesn't have any spell protections, he does have the belt of inertial barrier, which is going to provide him with 50% uh, magic damage resistance, so he shouldn't be too affected with um, with those, uh, those explosions. And of course, uh, other characters have protection from magical energy, that's going to stay on them, because they can keep their buffs protected, but uh, Jahira has nothing. So we are going to have to keep her away, uh, ideally, whenever these Balors are uh, about to die. Alright, first I think we're going to... Oh yeah, by the way, when it comes to Irenicus, um, he's also immune to, of course, many different status effects, like stun and uh, different instant kills and level drain and whatnot, but he is not immune to slow, to blind, and to hold. So he is immune to stun, but not to hold. And we're going to have some some surprises for him, <laughs> trying to take advantage of that. And um, also one thing to to talk about, you know, if we wanted to engage in such tactics, we could have, for example, uh, memorized a lot of improved hastes and just improved haste everybody and just gang up on him, rush him uh, while ignoring everyone else and win that way. But we're not going to do any of that. We're first going to dispose of the demons and then deal with uh, Irenicus properly. So I think first we're going to kill these Glabrezos because they still are uh, they can be a nuisance. They still can, of course, uh, offer us their remove magics. They have five attacks per round, and they are going to be easier to kill than the Balors. Uh, the Balors, of course, have the instant kill Vorpal weapons, and uh, they have that uh, aura of flaming death. That's why we have pre-buffed everyone with uh, protection from fire, or we have changed the, the equipment of Jahira and uh, Anaman, because we are going to have to hit them through these shields. They always have them present. Even if you breach them, they immediately reapply them. Uh, they also have stone skins. But uh, anyway, we are going to have to, you know, endure some damage reflected from the uh, aura of flaming death that they have. But uh, anyway, first I think we're going to, since a remove magic is flying towards Jahira, perhaps we can kind of, uh, in general, spread out and give ourselves a little bit more room. I think Senshiro can stay here. But yeah, we can kind of run away. Oh yeah, there's also a remove magic heading towards uh, Sir Anaman. We'll see how that is uh, going to fare. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, the standard Irenicus' uh, start with immunity to abjuration, improved haste, and uh, protection from magical weapons. So we are going to unleash our spell trigger upon Irenicus to dispel his uh, immunity to abjuration and to get rid of his 50 magic resistance so that we can uh, cast some spells at him and be successful with those. All right, so we'll see how that is going to all work for us. And I think Kiranai is already going to start working on this Glabrezu. All right, so now we have unleashed our stuff from Senashira and we're going to try to aid Kiranai in uh, the efforts of killing that Glabrezu. Now let's let's check out our these remove magics. All right, it seems like uh, Anaman's buffs are going to stay strong on him, but uh, yeah, he lost his haste coming from Imoen, but that's that's okay. His most important buffs are are still there. So now we can rejoin the fight, Anaman. Actually, not before casting some draw upon Holy Might. Now let's uh, see Jahira. That that uh, okay. That now hit. And uh, she also did retain uh, buffs coming from Anaman, but of course her own Armor of Faith got dispelled, so let's uh, reapply that. We always need to um, have that 
ready. Uh, especially since um, oh, there, there's one trick that Irenicus has up his sleeve, he's likely to use, that I mentioned already in, when we were talking about setting up our contingencies. Um, he of course can dish out some serious physical damage, and while in a time stop, he's of course going to succeed with all of his attacks, and we cannot react to it. And uh, basically, Jahira is going to be the most vulnerable, I think, in this situation to it, because Kiranai has stone skins, and I think we might also give her mirror images in a second. Uh, our mages are protected, and also have that those contingencies that may or may not help them. Um, Anaman is going to have nice mitigation coming from his Armor of Faith, his Defender of East Haven, and his uh, big health pool that is going to go up to 200 in a second. But uh, Jahira only has her own Armor of Faith and basically nothing else. She doesn't have an impressive health pool, and um, yeah, she's going to be kind of vulnerable to that, especially once her Iron, our iron Skins get dispelled as they were dispelled. And they are, of course, uh, pretty slow to reapply, and now that we have four demons, capable of casting remove magic, I'm not going to, you know, cast her last iron skins uh, just uh, to have those dispelled uh, soon. But anyway, now that uh, we have done the initial stuff, we are going to... We are going to cast Power Word Blind onto uh, Irenicus and he is not immune to blind, and this is going to reduce his Thaco and his armor class, although not the likelihood, I think, of him finding opponents, I think he is going to do that regardless, but at least uh, he's going to be a little bit less dangerous, and we have three of those, so once we switch over to try to uh, kill him, we're going to be able to reduce his armor class once again by that. And also, I think, even before reapplying Armor of Faith, that I know that Jahira needs to have that up at all times, I think what we're going to do is also quickly apply from a distance one of her two Dolorous Decay spells. And just as a reminder, these Dolorous Decay, uh, of course, can deal some damage and poison the target, but uh, most importantly, without any saving throw, they will slow the target for two rounds. And that means this is going to counteract uh, Irenicus' uh, improved haste and bring his attacks down to only three. Of course, this only lasts for two rounds, and... Uh, you know, after this passes, I'm going to try to remember to cast uh, our second one at Irenicus and kind of try to keep him at bay uh, for a little bit, um, for, for a while, I guess, before we're really ready to uh, to deal with him. But uh, yeah, this, this should make him a little bit less dangerous, that blind and that slow combined yeah. on him. And uh, yeah, how's that Glabrezu doing? Alright, we need Anoman in there. You know, Enoman has 200 uh, HP, has some really good stats. Now you can rejoin the fight. And that Balor seems to be interested in uh, yeah, to trying to attack our mages. I think I'm going to throw in a uh, Greater Malison coming from Emoen into the fray there, because of course uh, Irenicus' saving throws are impeccable, but we are going to be able to make them a little bit worse, and perhaps, uh, you know, with some spells. That uh, we're never going to throw at him any spells that need him to fail his saving throw, but you know many damage spells, of course, if he fails his saving throw, are going to do more damage. So we're going to just have that going whenever Imoen has a spare moment here. And I think Edwin needs to run away because we don't want him to permanently and instantly die. All right, that Glabrezu needs to die very quickly, and Irenicus is casting something, and we can't really interrupt him, because in his Slayer form, he is immune to non-magical weapons, and he has that protection from magical weapons active on him, and um, I think we're not going to get to, like, breaching him just yet. We're going to first uh, deal with some other stuff. Alright, so he did cast that time stop, and let's see what he's going to do with it. Alright, he's casting a spell. That's good. At least he's not doing any physical attacks. Alright, he casts... Uh, oh yeah, because he's blinded, so it, it does seem like uh, he cannot find a target here. Very good. So he casts that Horrid Wilting at himself, trying to, you know, deal some AoE damage around himself. He might be able to find Anaman here, but... It seems he's just content with uh, casting some other stuff. Alright, so... Uh, I might try to bring Anaman out of there, but... He is. He does have that 50% protection against magical damage, but I wouldn't really want to be caught in, like, two of these horrid wiltings over there. Alright, here... Yeah, it's 
pretty much impossible to outrun them whenever they are cast, uh, you know, in such close proximity. I think we're going to use this uh, protection from magical weapons on Anima or on Edwin to make sure he doesn't die. And let's see what else happened there. Okay, we had that uh, Greater Malison underway. All right, that's very good. Now let's just check. Okay, that Glabrezu is still alive. And I think what we're going to do is actually perhaps apply a uh, oil of speed on Anaman just so his attacks can go up to four instead of just three. He did cast that drop on Poly Holy Might and cannot act again yet, so let's just have him fight for now. Alright, another time stop uh, coming from Irenicus, and that Glabrezu at least died. Alright, now he's casting again. And summons a Dark Planetar, which is not good, because the Dark Planetar, of course, can uh, unleash some nasty spells instantly, and I think we're going to have to change our target priority and um, and just get rid of that Dark Planetar uh, immediately, because, of course, it can cast, like, Insect Plague, for example, instantly, or, you know, it can also remove magic, it can cast Firestorms, although we are protected, but, you know, there's a lot of nasty stuff, um, that uh, the Dark Plantar can potentially offer us, and this Breach is not going to work on Kirinai because she still has her uh, spell immunity to Abjuration. It's pretty surprising that he did find uh, Kirinai and he was able to cast a spell at her, but he is uninterested in uh, attacking her during that time stop. Alright, so he renewed his uh, protection from magical weapons and he did find Jahira. <laughs> And as you can see, he deals like 30 physical damage and has that cold damage on top of that. So, yeah, that's that's pretty dangerous for Jahira. We're going to run away with her and try to reapply that uh, Armor of Faith as soon as we can with her. But I think drinking a healing potion is going to be more important whenever she can uh, can act again. All right, Edwin seems like he cannot cast yet. And uh, Jahira should reapply another Dolorous Decay on, on Irenicus now, I think. Alright, it seems like uh, our spell immunity to abjuration has uh, expired just in time for his spell. He might have, you know, known that as <laughs> as the AI. So we are going to have to protect uh, Kirinai. But I think right now it's more important for her to just direct all of her damage onto this fallen planetar. And yeah, we are protected against its Vorpal hits, and uh, we're just going to try to dish out as much damage as possible add it uh, and kill it quickly. Alright, Edwin. You have some stuff prepared for, for later, but for now I think, yeah, use that protection from magical weapons. Yeah, now Animan should be able to drink this oil of speed and have one more attack and be quicker to maneuver. All right, we're going to heal up with Jahira and we're going to reapply some stuff on her. Probably that Dolorous Decay first and then Armor of Faith. All right, that Fallen Planetar is taking some nice damage. Of course, Imoen only having plus two bolts is not going to do anything against uh, that one. Might want to attack that Glabrezu. We have to keep fleeing here. Imoen actually can apply her own protection from magical weapons now because uh, this Balor seems to be interested in uh, trying to kill her. Alright, the Fallen Planetar we have to retarget again after that improved invisibility it cast. Alright, Imoen is protected. Uh, seems like uh, Jahir was blinded. That, that's not a big deal, although. Reapplying that Dolorous Decay is going to be a little more difficult now, but uh, fortunately that's a very, very quick you know, to cast spell, so perhaps she is not going to be interrupted before she can apply that. That effect to just make Irenicus a little bit a little bit uh, less dangerous. Alright, that uh, Planetar has now died. Let's now finish off the other Glabrezu. Alright, Edwin seems to be in safety for now. I think it might be time to apply another Power Word Blind onto Irenicus as well. Alright, Jahira is like in real danger, and also a, a remove magic 
hit her, but Anaman's buffs stayed on her. She needs to drink another potion. That's a higher priority. All right, and now Irenicus is blinded again. Doesn't seem like he's going to be a threat in the immediate future. So actually, let's bring Jahira back to our other guys. So let's reapply some protections on our on our mages. I think now it might be a good time for you to reapply some protections, Kirinai. Get some mirror images from Ilbratha. All right, that Glabrezu died. That's very nice. Now we're going to be able to move on to the Balors. Alright, since Jahira is not going to be too affected with that, uh, effective with that Dolorous Decay, I think we're going to just reapply uh, Armor of Fate for now on her and see if we can maybe try to engage one of the Balors, but uh, she is not uh, she is not protected from their magical explosion that they do upon death, so I'm not sure if, if Jahira is going to be able to really engage them too much. Anyway, uh, Irenicus might might find our other guys. Of course, this is <laughs> this is a, a buggy description. All right, there's a spell trigger coming coming at Sir Anaman. All right, just breach, chain lightning, and death spell. Not nothing for us to worry about, really. Let's just continue on that valor. Uh, to death spell, uh, also, if you might not remember, that, that uh, sounds kind of, you know, scary, a death spell, but uh, we are immune to that. Uh, this uh, only affects creatures below a certain um, level, really. Uh, the, although it's, uh, you know, in D&D &D it's, it's the HD uh, amount of uh, hit die, but it, it's effectively their level, and of course we are immune to that. Chain Lightning is not going to do too much damage to us, and Breach, of course, uh, dispelled some of vital uh, Anaman's buffs, and we are going to have to bring him out of there. Uh, because that uh, dispelled his death ward, for example, and we cannot permit Anaman to die an instant death from any of these Balors. Anyway, we also need to bring Imoen out of there. Her uh, protection from magical weapons is, is still active, but it's probably going to disappear soon. And also Kirinai worries me. She has no buffs on her, really. So I think what we might do is just at least give her a potion of invulnerability. So she can uh, have a better armor class and uh, saving throws, especially. Sen seeing that uh, she is not protected by chaotic commands, for example. Although I think it, it's the Glabrezus who uh, can cast Confusion, and uh, Balors can't really do anything too nasty to us in this situation, I think. Anyway, now that Anaman has his Death Ward ready, we're going to re-engage this Balor, and we really need to to kill them now. And now that uh, Jahira has her Armor of Faith, I think we're going to do one more heal on her and perhaps use her services to um, deal some damage to this other Balor once we are ready to engage him. I'm also going to have to... Alright, there he goes. Uh, he dies, and he is going to explode in a second. Yeah, so of course, uh, Anaman, having that 50% resistance, was not that m affected. Uh, everyone else is protected, and of course, as you can see, Irenicus uh, also can take damage from that. Anyway, I would like to heal with Anaman, and there's another breach coming at Anaman, which means that his death ward got dispelled yet again. I think uh, now Jahira healed, we can have her add some damage. And Anaman is going to have to reapply that death ward, that's his last death ward. But of course, I'm not going to risk it and uh, have him in melee with that Balor <coughs> when he is not uh, safe from that. Alright, and now should prepare our mages a little bit. They are, they should be able to provide us with some cool tricks soon once we are ready to engage Arenicus himself. And also, I would like to reapply a spell immunity to abjuration on uh, Senashira because if a remove magic coming from this Balor is successful uh, on her, this is not going to be not going to be good for us. So I think we are going to do that, just in case, just to keep everything safe. Uh, for our characters. Okay, Hanuman cannot heal yet. Okay, Jahira can. We can keep Jahira in there, in the in the fight for a little bit. Alright, there was another remove magic, I think. Yeah, coming from that Balor. Which uh, was not effective when it comes to dispelling Hanuman's buffs. At that level 27, man. Those buffs are sturdy, dude. Those buffs are, are staying strong. 
on our party members, which is very nice. We have lost Irenicus somewhere. Not too concerned about that for now. Okay, this Balor is near death. Let's let's pull Jahira out of there so that she doesn't suffer any unnecessary damage. All right, there we go. And now we are ready to find and engage Irenicus. All right, there he is. All right, now we can do some pretty cool stuff. Remember Bigby's clenched fist? <laughs> and the first uh, round of it... Whoops. <laughs> almost... Uh, almost fell here. I'm trying to, like, shift in my chair. <laughs> but anyway, in the first round, this spell, of course, holds the target with no uh, saving throw attached. And uh, Irenicus, without his uh, magic resistance, uh, he is going to be vulnerable to that because he is not <laughs> immune to hold. And we are going to be able to uh, hold him. What is it now? Also, Shahira, come with us. Okay, there's there's another horrid world thing. Perhaps we can get Adamant out of there before it hits. Yes, we can. All right, we are also going to have to uh, breach Irenicus because he seems to have protection from magical weapons active on him. He still seems to be blinded which is very nice, but he is a little too fast for my liking, so let's see. Alright, now he's held, <laughs> and now of course all of our uh, hits are going to automatically succeed once his uh, protection from magical weapons is dispelled. Alright, there he goes, and there we can, can deliver some damage onto him. Of course he has that monstrous regeneration, and he even failed his saving throw in his second round, so he is uh, held for one more round. We'll see about the, the saving throw in his third round. Because <laughs> I'm also waiting with that dolor Dolorous Decay once he gets unheld. <laughs> That's I, I feel kind of bad for him, you know? <laughs> right now, just, just held, blinded, just unable to do anything. This is how it ends for you, huh? And yeah, this is it. Curse you, Senashira. I shall not be defeated by you. What is happening? My magic! No! Sanashira kills you and restores her soul. Finally come to. I almost did not believe it when the priestesses told me that your body was showing signs of life once again. We resurrected who we could, but it seems nothing would draw your spirit back. We were about to give up when you began to stir this morning. H how long was I... dead? A couple of days, no more. However, you managed to find your way back. It is good that you have done so. You have done a great service for Soldan SLR. You saved the Tree of Life and myself, ending Irenicus' threat. To lose you would have been tragic. I have planned a ceremony to reward you and to show our gratitude for your actions. You are a hero to the elves, perhaps even a legend in the making. But enough of that for the moment. You will need to rest and regain your strength. I will send the priestess to awaken you when it is time. Those of you who have survived the return of the exile to Soldan SLR know me, your queen. But only some of you know the hero beside me, who was most instrumental in saving our city and the Tree of Life. Such selfless acts almost resulted in the loss of your life, and perhaps much more than that. These deeds were not performed alone. Sultan Nesselar also extends its gratitude to those who have traveled with you and fought by your side to help save our city. There is no reward adequate enough for one who has done so much. Let us offer, then, the eternal thanks of our people and an amulet of the Seldarine to remind you forever that you are welcome here amongst us. As for the man whom we once knew as John Aleph, I can only say that he died long ago. He lives in my memory still. To the man he became, the exile Irenicus, he who performed atrocities on you, the tree, and his former people, to him I can only send my prayer that he finds the peace in death he never found in life. I feel I must apologize on his behalf for what he put you and your friends through. For his madness, we stripped John Aleth of his elven immortality 
and exiled him, only to create Irenicus instead. I cannot help but feel we are partly responsible. It is something I shall have to ponder on. Yes, you are greatly, greatly responsible <laughs> for Jeanneleth <laughs> becoming Irenicus. Uh, anyway, also this amulet of Seldarin we're going to be able to inspect in uh, Throne of Baal once we regain control of our characters. This is a pretty nice amulet, but anyway. That is it, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to Shadows of Arm. It's been 127 episodes, <laughs> but of course it's not the end of our journey yet, as we still have Throne of Baal left ahead of us, the last part of the trilogy. And uh, after we finish this conversation here, there's going to be an ending cinematic, which I'm not going to talk over, so already I'm going to thank you all for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the series so far, and I'll see you in Throne of Baal. As for you, I imagine you are eager to resume your travels once again. We wish you well. No, we look forward to your return in the future, should you desire to. Ryan's ward has become too powerful. We should have acted long before now. There is no reason to be concerned. The fate of this fool has been sealed. But can we be so sure? This spawn of Baal is doomed. There is no escape.